climate, we have the vast majority of all of the knowledge that we need right now uh, to implement sustainable solutions to water scarcity as well as other water issues. It's not a matter of waiting for better climate models or waiting for newer engineering technologies. We have the information we need now. In many cases, the challenges that we face are inherently social, political, economic, cultural challenges. <coughs> And so our project is designed specifically to address this interface between the knowledge generation of the university and putting that knowledge into action to create a more sustainable future. I want to pick up on something that President Clinton said last night, and he said that you cannot address a problem, you cannot do something if you can't envision it. If you can't imagine a future, then it's very hard to take action to achieve that kind of future. And so one of the focal areas of our project is to create scenarios to create visions of a more sustainable future and to not accept the engineering system, the social, political, governance system that we have today as inevitable. Um, for those who travel to Arizona, it is often quite surprising to hear the story that we use coal from the Navajo Reservation in one of the largest coal-fired power plants in the United States. Uh, to power the movement of water over 300 miles in an open canal across the desert uphill to get to the major population centers in Phoenix and Tucson. Um, if you were to design a water system from scratch, this would not be the system that you envision. Right? Um, but yet, this is the system that we have now. So the question for students like you becomes, what is an alternative vision for the future? And how might something like a, an emphasis on renewable energy uh, to change the portfolio of energy that's used to transport water? Um, can we talk about large-scale, utility-scale solar installations on the Navajo Reservation or community-scale solar? Um, can we talk about different solutions for um, reducing the demand in the major metropolitan areas? Uh, what kinds of alternatives are available to reduce the gallons that we each use every day? A couple points are important here, and one is that we need a transparent, open, and very participatory dialogue about the values that we attach to water. People don't really think about and value water, they think about the things they do with it, right? We use water, we use water for consumption, for sanitation, for growing food, right? For producing semiconductor chips, right? Those products of the water are oftentimes the things that we actually value. Although I don't mean to diminish the inherent uh, value of water um, or other more um, uh, spiritual or uh, um, endemic values to water, but oftentimes people think about well, what we get out of our water. So what we need to do is to move the conversation away, disrupt the conversation about is there enough water, right? and move the conversation to how are we using the water that we have, and how are we affecting all of the different aspects of our society in delivering and consuming that goal? Um, one final point about uh, the, the future. Um, the future, particularly, my work focuses mostly on the Colorado River Basin and the western United States and, and, and Arizona in particular. Um, we are facing a future that is dramatically different than the past. The past is no longer an accurate, predict accurate predictor of the future. Um, in a climate-impacted future, we're going to be facing what the climate scientists call a non-stationary future, meaning the climate conditions will operate outside the historic range of variability. We can't look to the past and say, well,